Hi, this is Wendy Lee from CreativelyYours.com. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the U.S. and I'm super excited to be back as your guest today on Split Coast Stampers. I'm going to be sharing this super cool fun fold. It's a vertical easel card and um, that's the inside and this will stop it so it stands up so it's on display. So we've done, I'm sure you've tried an easel card before, or maybe you haven't, but this one's got a little fun um, fun element to it to create this front uh, panel here. So let's go ahead and get started. I hope that you're going to enjoy this one. So let's first pull in our supplies. So you are going to need a scoring tool, a trimmer, some cardstock, some adhesive of your choice, and a bone folder. Ah, oh, and I forgot a pair of scissors. Let's pull those in as well. You will need a pair of scissors. All right? At least for decorating. Let's go ahead and get started. The supplies I'm using today are all from Stampin' Up! So I am pulling in a piece of 5.5 by 8.5 Sahara Sand cardstock for my card base. We're also going to pull in some additional cardstock. I've got some, I've got a four and a quarter by five and three eighths piece of Whisper White, or a basic white cardstock. Two pieces of designer paper, two inches by five and three eighths. Then I've got some thick basic white cardstock that I've already die cut using the stitch nested labels die. So let me show you those. So we use the second largest, the third largest, if I can get it off there, All right, and the second smallest dies to cut those pieces out. So I've already done that um, so that you don't have to watch me die cut. All right, and I'm using thick cardstock. You could use regular cardstock, but um, I find that it, it holds up a little bit better with what I'm doing if I use a thicker cardstock. You're going to also want a couple scraps of Sahara Sand cardstock for punching. All right. We will be featuring the Art Gallery stamp set to decorate our card today. This is a, has beautiful floral images that you can use to create a variety of cards. It's got a lot of um, nice little sentiments in it as well. All right. Let's go ahead and get the card base set up. I'm going to bring in my scoring tool, move the card out of the way, and hopefully you're, I'm in camera here. All right, so I'm pulling in my 8.5 by 5.5 inch card base, and I'm going to score at 2 and 1 eighth and 4 and a quarter. So let's go ahead and do that. Great. Before I put this away, I want to go ahead and punch two circles from my scrap of Sahara Sand cardstock with a one and a half inch circle punch. Perfect. And I want to go ahead and score these in half. So I actually write on my scoreboard every one inch I mark it. That way I can use this as a guide without having to be on the corner side of it. So hopefully I'll get in the center of there. If it's not perfectly centered, it is not a problem. You just want your two circles to be the same if you can. All right, so we'll score this second one as well. All right, so we can go ahead and put this away. We will not need it again. All right, let's pull these in and grab our bone folder. So I want to go ahead and give it the card base a nice crease on each of these score lines. I find that it, it sits, functions much better, sits properly if I've got these pre-scored and a nice crease in there. I'm going to go back and do this outside edge one more time. All right, let's go ahead and do these two half circle, or these two circles, fold them in half, and we'll do the second one as well. All right, I'm going to set these aside for now. So this is really the mechanism of our card base, and then we'll have a stopper that's going to keep that open. 
the circles will be used to create what we need on the front to create our focal point. Cool? All right, let's start with the inside of our card. I find that's a little bit easier sometimes. So I am going to go ahead and just adhere in a piece of, of basic white cardstock right into the inside. This is cut uh, four and an eighth by five and three eighths. Let's grab our stamp and seal. We'll just adhere this right down into place. Now, if you wanted to stamp this layer first, you could do so. Next, I'm gonna bring in my small die cut piece and a scrap of paper, and I'm going to do a little stamping on this layer. So I'm going to pull in my Blushing Bride ink pad, and here is my image that I need, and I'm just going to stamp this image down on that piece there. So you've got that. Next, I'm going to bring in terracotta tile, and I'm going to add uh, some detail to the flower. So I'm going to stamp off to do this because I want a little bit lighter color than a full strength might give me. Let's see if I can see this. <laughs> That's always the challenge, right? Liking that so far. Now I want to do my sentiment. Thank you. So this particular stamp set has the thank you all in uh, a straight line across. And I'm actually going to stack it so I have the thank and then the you below it. So we're going to mask this. So I'm putting in basic gray ink. And I'm going to just ink up. Well, before I go there, I want to make sure that there's no residue. And there was. I'm glad I checked this. A little bit of residue left on my stamp from the last time I used it. I'm going to ink up just the thank. And then hopefully I will get this somewhat centered and straight. So my thank is right there. Now I need to clean this. I'm going to stamp off any residue. And I'm going to ink up just the U. Now you could also use a marker to color directly on to the stamp if you prefer. But I like just inking it up on the ink pad. Nice. I like how that turned out. Okay, so I can set this aside. This will be my stopper when I'm ready to put the, uh, this into the inside of the card. I'm going to hold off on that for just a moment. Next, I want to go ahead and stamp my piece for the front of the card. So I'm taking the smaller of the next two die cuts that I've got. I'm going to repeat my stamping. So I'm going to pull in my Blushing Bride ink again. Ink up this image here and stamp that. That looks pretty good. Okay. Let's go ahead and add our terracotta tile detail, just like we did on the layer on the inside. I'm going to stamp off and then add in that detail. Love it. Okay. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of Wink Estella. So Wink Estella is a little uh, glitter pen, and I'm just going to brush some on. I don't want a solid image, and I don't want my ink to run. So I'm just going to put a little bit on the flowers to give it a uh, tiny shimmer. You don't have to do this. I just like it. I think it's pretty. Okay. All right, so that stamping is done. We've got one more piece to stamp. I'm going to go ahead and do that next. So on our scrap of Sahara sand, I'm going to bring back in the basic gray ink pad and my second sentiment which is, you are lovely. Hopefully it's stuck to the block there. 
want to ink that up. Stamp that right down on that scrap. Next, we'll bring in the classic label punch. I'm going to cut that out. Okay, we're ready to assemble the rest of our card. So on the front of the card, I'm going to go ahead and adhere down my two designer paper strips. centering it left to right and trying to get about the same distance on this outside edge. I'm not worried about the fold line because I'm going to cover a lot of that anyway. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side of the front. So if you end up with a little bit of a wider gap here, it's really not a big deal. Okay, next I want to go ahead and tie my ribbon around this layer here. So I'm bringing in this Blushing Bride Metallic Ribbon, and I'm going to use about 15 inches, but I like to leave mine on the spool when I tie it. I find it's a little easier to work with. So let me go ahead and get this going. Throw that ribbon over there. And I, you can use either side, but I'm going to use the satiny side as the side that's facing me. Let's see if my hands will let me tie this today. <laughs> Sometimes that's the challenge. And I really want my knot over far to the edge. So it's going to make our loops. And I'm going to try to manipulate the ribbon so that it ends up with the same side facing up as I tie it, which is not always easy to do. Let's see if I can get a hold of that loop. Maybe. I may have to start again. Let me try again. My hands are being a little stubborn today. I won't try to keep it in that corner. All right, so you can see that my knot is wanting to flip to the other side, and so is this layer on the bottom here. So I'm going to force that bottom to flip over. Well, I say I am. We'll see if I can get it to work. Maybe I'm going to tie it a little bit first. Let's see if I can get it to twist. There we go. I'm not, well, nope, it doesn't want to do it. All right, well, the center of the knot is going to stay the glitter side because I can't get it to flip. But that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and pull this. And just mess with this bow until I'm happy with how it appears. So this is not one of the easier ribbons to tie. We have some really soft ribbons that are easy to tie. This one, because of the metallic, has a little more um, resistance, I guess is the right word. So it doesn't slide as easily as I'm holding that knot. Okay, I think I'm going to be happy with that right there. So we'll go ahead and just clip this off with our paper snips. Sorry about that fumbling a little bit there. And we'll get rid of that ribbon because we don't need it anymore. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and slide this a little more to the edge. See if I can get it over as far as I can get it. All right, I'm happier with that right there. Okay, great. So we want to go ahead and adhere this piece to our card front. So we're going to pull in our liquid adhesive and our two circles. So on one side of each of the circles, I'm going to apply a little bit of liquid adhesive. I don't want it to ooze out, but this is going to allow me to slide it a little bit uh, to put it in place gives you a little leeway to that. Okay. 
So I'm just going to place this down on the card front and one on the opposite of the fold. So let me go ahead and fold this so you can see what I'm talking about. So when I fold it, I'm going to slide these two so they are up against that fold. And I'm going to go ahead and hold those for just a moment to let that glue sit ever so slightly because I don't want those to move on me. Okay, hopefully this makes sense. Now we're going to apply some adhesive to these circles, the top of the circles. And we'll lay this piece right down on top. And I'll hold that for just a moment. Let that get secured into place. So that's really the trick to this vertical easel card, is those circles. You could use um, strips of paper instead of circles. I just think the circles look really nice when it's um, folded open. All right, we're going to let that dry for just a moment, and we'll go ahead and add some dimensionals to our other layers. All right. And add dimensionals to that piece, and then we can go ahead and pop this piece right on that card front. Great. Pull that ribbon where I want it to be. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to pop my sentiment right on the front of that. Now, if you um, don't like using the larger dimensionals, you can use mini dimensionals. Those would work just as well. Depends on how you're going to decorate your project and what your personal preference is. And we're going to place that about right there. Okay. And then the last piece is the stopper on the inside. And of course, we could have put this down first. I just like to um, open it to do that. So that's about where I want it to be. And a little bit from the edge. All right. So that is my stopper to my card. So now I can set it up on display. And it still folds flat to plop it into an envelope and send it in the mail. I hope that you really enjoyed this one today and that you'll give it a, a try. Um, you know, you could change up your stamps uh, and your paper colors and make this one for just about any fun occasion. So, all right. Thanks for now. Have a great day.